Ahoy, this is Zdenka. In this tutorial, let's learn how to edit footage such as concerts, weddings, long lecture videos, tutorials, gaming, filmed with multiple cameras at the same time. Let's edit it the fastest and easiest way. This video is brought to you by Wondershare. What really saves time is to film, for example, tutorials with multiple cameras at the same time. So you don't have to do that later, set up everything separately. But the nightmare happens when it comes to editing such footage. If you are still editing the old fashioned way, trying to stack the clips on top of each other, sync them manually, and then try to figure out what you're going to be keeping, what you're going to be cutting out. That's the past. It's 2024. There is much easier and faster way of doing this with only a few clicks. And it's actually quite enjoyable. I'm going to be using the latest version of Filmora 14 that has a brand new multicam video feature that will make everything automatic. You don't have to synchronize the clips manually. Once I open up the software, I will create a new project and import all clips. I have five clips in total shot with different cameras, Sony a7S III, Insta360, Go3, DJI Osmo Pocket 3, Opspot Tail, and Desktop Screen Recording. Once the clips are imported, I will select all five clips, right-click, and select Create Multi-Camera Clip. Settings will open up. I'm going to name the clip, for example, Gaming Setup. Below is Synchronized Method. There are two ways you can automatically synchronize the clips. You can select audio or first frame. As I was turning on the cameras one by one, not at the same time, I'm going to go with the audio. I will also leave checked auto create proxy files as this will really speed up my computer. If you are not familiar with the term proxy, let me explain it in a simple words. Most likely you were filming your clips in 4K. Those are huge files and they can really slow down the computer when you stack them on top of each other. Filmora is going to create a copy of those clips in much smaller resolution. So when you're going to be editing, it's going to be using those and it's going to be way faster. But don't worry though, during exporting, it's going to be using the 4K files. So the end video still will be in high resolution. Let's hit OK and just wait for the program to do its work. The process is done. There is one single file on a timeline called Gaming Setup. If for some reason the files are not synced properly, you can adjust them manually. Simply right click and go to Edit Multi Camera Timeline. Now you can see all those clips stacked on top of each other. Let's return to the main timeline by clicking on Gaming Setup and selecting Main Timeline. Let's speed up the computer even faster by selecting Playback Quality. Right now, the player's preview window shows full quality. Let's hit that and scroll down to Quarter Quality. It is only for the preview. We don't need to see the full quality. The next thing we want to enable is multi-camera view by hitting this icon at the top right corner. It's going to display all five camera views. There is another important control and that is selecting audio source. You can select any of the clips. You can also enable more than just one audio clip. I'm going to go with the screen recording as the sound is coming from an external microphone. Now I'm ready to edit and the process is really simple. I will play the video and as I listen to the video, I will simply click on my preferred camera to select the angle I want. As I click the camera, it will automatically make a cut and edit on the main timeline. Here is what I got after selecting a few camera angles. So this is the raw edit, pretty simple process and fun. Let's bring the final edit to the next level by adjusting framing of the clips. Let's right click and select once again, edit multi camera timeline. I am going to select the first clip at the top, right click and scroll down to crop and zoom. New window opens up and all I have to do now is drag the top corners to reframe the shot. I'm going to move the focus a little bit more on Tom. 
selecting less of the room around him. I can also move the frame around until I like the final composition. Let's apply and now this is the final framing. I'm going to do the same thing with all the clips below, just making sure the framing is correct and makes sense for the shot. Let's recap what we've done so far. We did the basic edit with the help of multicam video edit feature and we have reframed the shots so it looks nice and clean. The last thing to do is color grade the footage. The process is also very simple with the help of another new AI feature called AI Color Palette. Let's select the first clip and click on the AI Color Palette icon. You can select any frame as reference you want to take colors from. As this clip has the same consistency, there is nothing changing there, it's the same framing, I don't have to worry about the selected frame. I am just going to hit Generate. Once this process is done, all I have to do is hit Save and Apply. You will see this new look saved as my palette one. Let's select the next clip, enable AI Color Palette and select the My Palette One preset. As you can see now, the clip has been now automatically color graded to match the colors from the first clip. There is a further option to make the effect stronger or keep it light. I am going to increase the strength a bit. It is quite good as it is, but I will still tweak it further. I'm going to go to Color Adjustment Panel and play with the clip some more. I'm going to adjust the exposure, bring up the contrast, highlights as well, and brightness. I'm actually going to drag the brightness down a bit. As he is sitting in front of this not so flattering wall, I think Vignette would be another tool that could help him to stand out in this frame. Let's go to Vignette Control and drag the slider to the left to darken the area around him. I will bring the roundness all the way to 100 and still drag the vignette a bit down. I will also pull feather all the way to 100 and adjust vignette even further to see the dark area around the subject. So this would be this clip. And I will continue the process with the rest of the clips, color grade them all until I'm happy with the results. Let's return to the main timeline and see how everything looks. I'm just going to replay the edit. The last step would be exporting the final edit. Let's hit export. New window shows up. Let's select typical 4K resolution with high quality. There is one more setting that is quite interesting. I have to admit that it really caught my attention and that will be auto highlight for YouTube shorts. As the software will be exporting the final edit, it will be creating in the background 60 seconds YouTube short at the same time. It will select the most important parts on its own. I find this feature pretty helpful as creators, we are pushed to post on different platforms and sometimes it can be pretty tough because of the time. All that is left to do now is to hit export. As you can see, it's all now working in the background. Filmora has grown into very helpful time-saving software. For those interested, link to Filmora version 14 can be found below the video in a video description. Give it a thumbs up if you found this video informative, if you learned something new, and don't forget to subscribe for more. And uh, I might see you in one of those next. Ciao. Ahoy.